Well, I just want to do a little update video here about the tilapia. Y'all want to see how they're doing here. Let's look at this. Let's look at them there. So, right now, I'm mainly feeding them uh, the fallen limbs from the banana, the fallen limbs from the papaya. You see them eating that papaya stem right now. We've got them just swarming on that, eating it. You see that? This isn't a commercial grow. It's nothing, nothing about speed or being fast or a harvest date. This is in a backyard hobby. Um, they eat the leaves and all. You can see them over here. Uh, they'll, right now they're enjoying that nectar off the end of that papaya. But they're eating these leaves in here too. Like you can see here where they've stripped that one completely naked, see? that off of it um, on down in the water in there too eight others it's eating it away they like if I'll smash the end of one of those limbs and it's got all that papaya sap and they like to feed it that sap uh, you can look at another one here and watch them go in and out feeding right there at the end of it that to focus that. I mean, they really like eating these papaya leaves. They like papaya in general. See that? They're all around the pond doing that down here at the other end too. Now, a subscriber told the truth on something. He said that if I didn't make a, a screen and a frame to keep them from eating all the roots off the bottom of that duckweed and that azola that they'd eat the little tiny root off and kill the azola or duckweed. Well, they've been feeding on that azola and duckweed and they've ate it way down. And you can see there's not much of it left. But I didn't ever get a screen made, but I'm not concerned about it right now. Um, the guy that I got that from, he's here in the neighborhood. He has a farm, it's outside of town. He'll bring me a big old sack just full of it, like one of those feed sacks or concrete sacks, just packed full of that Azola and duckweed. And so when I make a screen, I'll let him bring me more. And I'll this time take that advice and put that little, uh, like a little floating cage to just keep the Zola and duckweed in. And then just throw some out over to let them eat it and keep the other protected. So I need to work on that. I've got them here now where if I wiggle my finger in the water, they... They come to where I am. They'll come from, they'll hear it. And they'll come all over from the pond and gather up. I just wait a second now. And then I don't know if you'll be able to see, but uh, the glare is wrong. All where I put my finger. Can't see it. The can't really see it. The um, glare's got me wrong here. Maybe if I go to the other side. Maybe the glare will work in my favor. Let me see here. Yeah, I see them coming. And here they come. Let's try again. They'll all come to wherever I'm shaking my finger around. It's doing good. I've also had 
subscribers commenting they're all on top of the water over there right now um, as subscribers commenting also they don't see an aeration pump in here this tanks huge for these fish at the moment and they're doing just fine I do not need an aeration pump going yet uh, eventually I will and I have one and eventually I'll put it in here and I'll set up a filter eventually but I'm not at that state yet and I'm not feeding commercial feeds that are wasting and spoiling the water and them just pooping nine and nothing fighting them as fast as I can um, so I'm not in a big crunch on that right now show you here they're up here eating right now this is a hobby they are really growing They will strip these papaya stalks all the way down to nothing. That will strip those big banana leaves. Man, they like that too when I put them in there. Or they will eat a banana leaf up. If you don't know it, um, you know, tilapia, they, they like plants. They like plants. Now, they when they're real little, they'll, they'll eat worms or... A decaying fish or anything like that mosquito larva no problem um, that's another thing people said having that in your backyard isn't that going to draw a lot of mosquitoes and them breeding in here no because if there's a larva hatching here these tilapia are gonna eat it and they have been eating them there's not you won't find not one little wiggler in here nowhere so maybe that'll answer somebody's questions too there is no little mosquitoes just look at them all in there see if I can zoom one more time by like a super zoom they're all in there everywhere So I think that may answer a few questions. Um, the fish are doing great. Um, they're doing good eating on this vegetation. And I'll zoom up again, you can see where they've been stripping those leaves. You can see all up there, they're stripping that one down. They've got that one really stripped down. Um, they like to work on those stalk ends and really get that sap out of it. They love vegetation. Man, they're down there working a papaya leaf there right now, just eating it up. Well, what happens, I put those papaya leaves in here. After they soften after a couple of days in here, that's when they really go after them. It's when it starts softening up. So we just throw it on there and let them have at it. See them down in there all around it there. If I can get a better view for you. Well, just want to share that. Um, so, reiterate again no, there's no mosquito larva. Yes, there will eventually be an aeration pump. Yes, there eventually will be a filter. I've got everything set up here to do it. It's just I'm not in a hurry right now because the water's in really great shape and the fish are really small. I'm not fast hard feeding them, so um, I don't have a whole lot of like dirty pollutants and all. The water's not heavy with ammonia or nitrates or anything right now. 
I do know about all that. I'm not totally naive. When I said I've never raced tilapia, don't mean I never raced fish. And uh, I do understand all of that. And we like to do things natural ways, not depend on commercial feeds. Can you imagine if you only depended on commercial feeds, what happens if something breaks the supply line and you have no commercial feed available? What are you gonna feed them? Well, you don't know because you didn't do the research. All you know is go to the store, buy the feed, and for me, um, we have all this deadfall that falls off these papayas here everywhere. Just like all right here, all around here, we have more of them growing. There's some I can break off there because those are constantly growing and we're constantly growing new younger ones too. There's a little small young one growing over there. And so sometimes you have little uh, papayas that either rotted or fell off or you, know, you peeled some off to thin them take a stone right here smash them up right here you see where area where I've been smashing stuff here and uh, then I throw them in there my goodness they go after it so fast so all that little wasted fruit they love papaya research that tilapia love papaya and so I take all these things that are natural now I will supplement some feed with them but I don't want to spend big money on that. I'm not trying to have a harvest day to go to the market with. This is for our own enjoyment. Um, I will cull them at some point, thin them down, um, and those will probably get ate and share with the family. And there will always be new ones breeding. And uh, after I stocked it this time, it's not like I'll do a clean harvest all the way through and then have to do a restocking. This this should stock them for the long haul. They should always end up with some adults in there breeding again. Now, I do plan to build a breeder tank right here to the side, and I do plan to build another tank as big as this one right here next to it, and uh, then I can keep some adults over there breeding. For our breeder tank and keeping some females and a male over there and all, that proportionate number uh, off to the side I thought that's a great idea and I may introduce um, after these get up a little bit bigger I may introduce some other species in here like maybe some freshwater prawns and see how that goes as well um, just for our enjoyment now tell me what you think about that uh, people have mentioned about the catfish um, catfish will eat anything and they'll eat the other young tilapia too and I really don't want that to happen. I could raise just a catfish only tank. It's a possibility. Man, people are raising them here around me everywhere. They call those catfish here Pantat. P-A-N-T-A-T. Pantat. So if you're driving down the roads and you see signs say Pantat for sale, that's not like uling for sale or some buko pie for sale or anything like that. That, if you don't know that word, pantat, that is catfish. That are those uh, African catfish um, that have been brought here and they're raising them all over the country. And man, everywhere I drive down the road here, pantat for sale, pantat for sale. Now, of course, I could raise them for myself, but... I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, I really like the taste of the tilapia here. And uh, I like prawns. I, I like that. I might try something totally different. Who knows? Who knows? But y'all tell me what you think about my little operation so far. And I just tell you in the evening times, this is one of my favorite spots out here to come to. And just sit and chill and watch these little fish grow. They're there eating those leaves right now. And uh I really enjoy it. Enjoy it a lot. Everybody, take care. Comment. Tell me what you think about this uh, little side hobby and project and uh, your input about the natural feeding methods here. And I'll see you on the next one.